So this here is a fine piece of work created by Sean. It's the competitor content gap analysis for Inflow. I was interested in experimenting more with keywordinsights.ai tool because I was really intrigued by the grouping. As you can see here, I think Sean's got almost 4,000 keywords in this list and they were mostly manually grouped, the ones that exist in groups. And uh, as you know, we're always looking for efficiencies and different things like that. So keywordinsights.ai is a platform that's got a few different tools. One of their tools is called keyword clustering. Essentially, you know, you just start a new project, tell it, you know, United States is where you want to be and that, you know, it's English, assuming that's what we're working in. And then if you choose to have it cluster keywords, right, you're going to be uploading your list. There's some different choices and they have a fantastic 19 minute video on the entire platform that I highly suggest you guys check out. I followed kind of the best practices, which was to choose this method, which was a little slower, but I think I got the report in like 20 minutes. I left everything else the same, right? So you can kind of see what some of these mean. And what this is going to do is look at the SERPs and it's going to take all that into context when it's clustering your keywords using AI. So it's not just semantic based clustering, it's actually based on the things that are actually ranking well for all these keywords. In addition to doing the groupings, you can have it add context. This is a tool that Sean used before, and I think he showed us in a skull session. He was trying to prove to magazine line that results for different magazine titles were showing both product pages as well as articles. And so what this will do is it'll say how many are articles, how many are product pages, you know, in the SERPs for each keyword. If you check this one, this will look at where your site is ranking for the keyword being analyzed. That is then used to help calculate an opportunity score. So in other words, if you already rank number one for a keyword, then there's no opportunity, right? But if you rank number two, you've got the opportunity to move up to number one, which can be pretty significant. So, you know, you could do that. And if you want to, you can also have it suggest titles using AI. Each of these different things cost more credits. And in the little that I've played with it so far, I would never use this on like an initial run because we're just not at that stage. Like we're still trying to figure out what content hubs and topics and things we're going to use. But rank is really helpful and context can be helpful. It's also something you can run later on a smaller set of keywords so that it costs less credits, if you will. Basically what I did was I just copied the keywords and the volume that was in the original spreadsheet. It emailed me 30 minutes later saying the report's done and it was a Google sheet with five tabs. This is kind of the simplest view and this is what's called the cluster data tab. So basically it's got one row for each cluster that the tool came up with based on the list that was uploaded. And then a comma delimited list of each of the keywords that were in that grouping. Another way to look at this is pivot table by keyword. So here's the cluster and then here's each keyword basically on its own row. And this is where you start to be able to look at things like opportunity score. For example, the biggest opportunity for us in terms of these clusters identified was for content strategy. And I don't know exactly what the number represents. It's probably something like volume or something like that. But if nothing else, it's just a score relative to each other. Now we can start going through it and saying, you know, this one kind of looks ridiculous. We're not going to go after this on the blog or we're going to go after this differently or, hey, this looks like a really good idea, so on and so forth. That's kind of how much I got through it already. It does have this hub and spoke suggestion as well. It's got some other things like informational intent, fragmented intent, right? Here's where, you know, it says the number of articles and product slash category pages that are involved. So I thought it was pretty cool. And again, all you need is a list of keywords, which it does have a keyword research tool. I haven't really played with it, but it's there and you can pull things 
from different places and, and dig into people also ask and all that kind of stuff. And then there's also a content brief tool as part of this. And this tool is interesting, it takes a little bit to load, but once you've entered your topic, right, which you know, could come from that cluster, it pulls in basically content from all of the sites that are ranking. So SEMrush is ranking number one, Terakeet's ranking number two, and you can see your H1s, H2s, et cetera. You can you know, kind of expand that and see what are kind of the main points and different things that are covered in each section. And you can actually then move them over to this editor over here. You know, you can say, okay, this is going to be an H1. You could then edit it so it's not the same. If you click this, it generates AI content to just kind of add more context. But that AI content is actually based on these SERPs. So that can be helpful. I, I've seen some kind of ridiculous stuff that it writes. It certainly wouldn't use it to write an article, but it may be helpful in that way. You can also pull things into the brief from people also ask, Reddit questions, you know, just kind of dig these, move these over to kind of make your outline. And then finally, if you do use the content brief tool, the title AI feature shows up again here, just for this topic. You can choose to use one of these as, as the title. You can also edit the meta and of course the export to Google Drive or Docs or whatever the case may be. I don't know. I thought that was pretty cool. Could save a lot of time. Real quick, the content brief tool, yeah. when it generates that AI content, do you mm -hmm. happen to know if it's unique? I it's probably know. not great, like you had mentioned, but I'm wondering if, if you wanted to use it, would you have to change it? I don't know. I think it is unique because that would be kind of the point of using AI versus they could have just scraped the content from where I pulled this bullet over. So I think it is unique, but I'm not 100% sure. And I was going to mention too, this looks a lot like with how it's pulling in competitors and you can have those little bubbles and you can drag them over. SEMrush just released a content outline brief tool that looks just like this. I know there's like content harmony and other ones and things like that. I don't know if it's as intuitive as just dragging over actual bullets from places or whatnot, but it does seem pretty cool.